Happy Tuesday. I'm so sorry that I'm unable to be live with you tonight. You know how I hate to do that. Um, but I did need to pre-record this one because I'm likely still driving to South Carolina at the time this video goes um, goes live on my YouTube and Facebook channel. So I appreciate you watching. Don't leave. Don't leave just because I'm not here. I am going to do an awesome project recipe. And because this is a recording and I can't do a live drawing, I will have a fun Friday giveaway. And if you've been watching me for a while, then you might remember those. So to be entered, all you have to do is like or comment, like, comment, just like you normally do, or share, and you will get an entry into the Fun Friday giveaway. And then I will be live on Friday evening. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure when, because I'll be driving back to Florida. Um, so I'm not sure when I'm going to get home or when I'll go live, but I'll show all the new, um, items that are set to release Monday. Cause we should get an email on Friday with that. And we can talk about the secret box opening, which is happening on Friday. So it'll be a fun time, uh, to get together in a short time. Um, I'll just do a quick video and make someone a winner and you won't need to be present to win. Uh, since I wasn't present tonight. Um, anyway, I just drove home today from St. Simon's Island from uh, my retreat to the river, which was amazing, um, as it always is. This is our third year at the play at Epworth by the Sea, and it's a great facility. The sun sets and the river. We did have some crazy weather yesterday. And so many people had to drive in that weather to go home. Uh, so I, all reports are that everyone has made it home safe. So I know it was a scary drive. Um, we stayed over last night. And so that's why I was just getting home today. So home today, unpack from the retreat, repack, um, and then pick up my mom's dog and then back to South Carolina to deliver her home because she's been here since before Jumpstart January. So she's ready to go home. And so is her dog, Leo. And um, so it's been fun to have her here for Jumpstart January and the retreat to the river. Um, so some quick announcements. Like I said, fun Friday giving, uh, drawing this week. Just like and comment on the video to be entered. You can also share. That'd be great. And um, that will get you entered. And then I'll go live on Friday and we will find out who our winner is. Um, there's still secret boxes available and they're still 10% off until they are open. So until um, February 9th, this Friday, they're 10% off. So if you would like one, just reach out or comment below and I can put one on my next order. I will be ordering um, before they go to regular price or go off sale. So I'm not sure how Creative Memories is doing that this time. But we did have a super secret secret box opening uh, this weekend at St. Simon's. And um, I really like the box. Uh, you can see the color palette right there. Um, I think it's beautiful. And I've actually decided that I needed to order a second one because I really like the paper and the embellishments, and I think it's going to work really great for Aiden and EJ's wedding album. So, um, anyway, hit me up if you want one of those. Okay, there's a virtual crop, like I said, going on this coming weekend, February 9th to Tuesday the 13th. And that's a virtual crop. If you post your sketch, your, um, pages in the virtual crop also add hashtag Daytona area scrapbooking to be entered to win CM credits from me um, just by doing that. That way it draws my attention that somebody in our little scrappy community posted a page and I can see it um, and find it and give you credit for it and enter you to win CM credits. All right, tool time with Tara's next Tuesday. I will be home <clears throat> and I am super excited to show you these two new border punches. Excuse me. <clears throat> the uh, postage stamp one, super fun. 
and it comes with embellishments. Now, uh, this is a new kind of thing. They've done embellishments with the collection, they being Crate Memories, but never just with the purchase of one punch. So there's fun little stamps that fit in those little slots. And this is a great um, punch, sort of like the hand tools, because the punch is cool. Also, the punch poop is cool. Um, so you're going to want to tune into that next Tuesday. You can RSVP on Daytona area scrapbooking so that you get a reminder and then you won't miss it. Take you Tuesdays in a couple weeks and that'll be a 12 p.m. show because I have DAR that evening. And so you won't want to miss that if you use Forever uh, Artisan 6. I will be doing a design along. And I just looked um, when I got home tonight that Scrappy Happy Hour is two thirds full already. Uh, I posted it last week. And um, so that is filling up. I have a limited number of spaces. You can choose scrapbook pages or um, mini cards. So it's three cards. And then use of your tools, uh, use of my tools and my adhesive for the class. Plus you get a CM Simple Pocket and your choice of ice cream or a beverage. So you can come join us for a little afternoon uh, ice cream on Sunday, February 25th. And I would love to see you there. Um, retreat with the Memory Maniacs. Like I said, we just got home from St. Simon's Island. Uh, that ended yesterday and this summer, these are my next three retreats. So June is Lakeland, Florida, and it's in downtown historic Lakeland. Um, and then Brevard, North Carolina, right at the base of the Pisgah National Forest. And we're going to see some white squirrels and it's going to be amazing. And then Helen, Georgia, and we are going to have to bust out our lederhosen and uh, um, other... <laughs> So we're going to have fun with that uh, in the smallest little German town, adorable in Helen, Georgia. If you haven't been there, um, you're not going to want to miss this. So Brevard and North Carolina are back to back. So if you have the time and the desire, you can scrapbook with the Memory Maniacs from Sunday, July 14th, I think. Um, that is when Brevard starts. Let's look in my calendar. I should know that. Yep. Sunday, July 14th to Thursday, the 18th for Brevard. And then we hop on over to Brevard. It's like an hour and a half, two hours drive from Brevard to Helen, which is outside Atlanta. And then it's the 18th to, um, it'll end the evening of the 21st. So you can leave the 21st if you don't have to drive far or you can just scrap all the 21st and then drive home um, on Monday. Choice is yours. All right, so looking forward to that. Okay, oh, happy day. I heard that Punxsutawney Phil did not see his shadow, so um, spring is coming early. That doesn't mean much for us down here in Florida. I hope that doesn't mean it's gonna get hot super fast, but I know the rest of the country that's been getting snow is very excited about this. What I'm excited about are these three fun spring events that are headed our way. So March, there'll be a spring fling. April will be National Scrapbook Day. And May will be Go Gray in May. And that's our fundraiser in uh, Brain Cancer Awareness Month. And that is to benefit the Cannonballs for Came Foundation. So um, spring fling will be a free to attend event, sort of like an open house, but it, they'll have um, free make and takes, paid make and takes, demos, um, all kinds. It's a great um, event to bring someone new to scrapbooking or someone that's been saying to you, hey, I really wanna check out what you've been doing or I used to do scrapbooking and I need to get back into it or they just moved into the area and they're trying to find um, they're scrappy people. So stay tuned for more details about March. I'm just finishing finalizing the dates on that. Um, so the spring fling and national scrapbook day, um, are first and then go gray in May, go gray in May will be the 17th and 18th of May. I think that's the Friday, Saturday. Um, and, but it's not out on my website yet. 
So those three events will um, be coming out very soon. Creative Memories, I'll be on a webinar with them this Thursday night, and they're going to release all the fun stuff to Creative Memories Advisors, um, all the artwork and theme for National Scrapbook Day. So as soon as I have all that and the dates are finalized, I will get all that up to you. And I am super, super excited. All right, many thanks if you have subscribed to my YouTube channel, which is Daytona Area Scrapbooking, just like my Facebook. Um, thank you so much for doing that. It's a great way for you to watch old videos. It's the easiest way because it doesn't get lost in all the other posts on Facebook. So I appreciate you if you've already subscribed. If you haven't, you can do that. That'd be awesome. Thank you. All right, just one last reminder in case you're hopping on here late that there will be a fun Friday drawing this week. So no live in the feed drawing tonight because I am recorded tonight. Um, so thanks for watching and hopefully you're still here watching this. Thank you if you are. Appreciate you. All right, let's get rid of this and let's switch cameras and I'm going to check my mic. Thank goodness. All right. Um, let's build this. Let's do this project recipe, shall we? Let's change this camera. Okay. So our project recipe tonight is the This Life project recipe. And as usual, I will not be using the This Life paper. Um, that is because I hope you registered for this class. If you didn't, quick jump off this now. It's recorded. You can come back to where you left off, but jump off it now. Register for, go to Daytona Area Scrapbooking right here. Um, register for this event, Project Recipe, and then in the confirmation reminder email, um, you will get the PDF to this. And if something happens and you don't, and you're registered and you lost it, um, I can see who's RSVP'd. So RSVP, and if you've RSVP'd and you lost the PDF, just let me know. Okay, so we are going to build this, and I am going to use this border punch um, because it's new and it's fun and I love it, and it's one of those um, punches, border maker punches, that I think is underappreciated. And it's just out of the gate. So don't underappreciate this border punch. I think you're going to really like it. Um, you could also, you know, when I show the project recipe, you can, you don't have to use the punches that are used, but you would want to pick a punch that um, you can piece the poop. You can like, see, you'll see, but we're going to punch this blue paper and then we're going to use the um, banners that are punched out and we're going to use them as embellishments. So you want to pick a punch where you have usable punch poop, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. Because see, this is with the border maker cartridge. And um, so we're going to get to that very quickly. Okay, so I am actually doing pictures from a scrapbooking cruise. So the next step, you know, so when I started doing project recipes on live, I started with my very first retreat. Well, the retreat I just had in St. Simon's was my 63rd retreat. So I'm catching up and I apologize if you can hear my mom talking to the dogs in the other room. Um, okay. So it's about a year until our next scrapbooking cruise. I'm very excited. It'll be my 15th that I've hosted right now. It is full. I'm trying to work um, with Royal Caribbean to see if we can open up their conference rooms are in sections and I'm trying to see if we can open up another section so that we can add more space for more scrappy friends. All righty. So I've got my two base pages. They are going to be white. That is what the recipe calls for, but of course you can use whatever you want. Here's something fun. I just, like I said, I just unpacked my car from the retreat so I barely know where anything is. I'm super excited. I could find my uh, banner punch easily. And, but our inserts are photo safe. So you can use them as white card stock. You can you cut them up and use them for matting. Uh, it's made of the same 
cardstock that our paper is. It's it's actually very thick, and like I said, it is photo safe. So you can use it in your scrapbooks. And because it was handy, I'm using it in mine. I'm not using any welcome home paper, um, nor am I using any natural disposition. So I guess I just had those laying around. The paper I am using, this paper was from the Florida um, pack that came out last summer. Super cute. And then this is some shimmer paper that was in a secret box. And then this is from the Shiplap paper pack, which is still available, but it's on last chance. And it's amazing. It's all wood grains. I had a bunch of it at the retreat and I sold a bunch of it at the, at the retreat, but I'm sort of obsessed with it. I'll definitely be ordering more. So that's another one. If you want some Shiplap paper, let me know. Like I said, it comes in, has all kinds of shades of wood. And I picked this, um, even though it's a little grainy, because it just reminded me of all the wood that's on a cruise ship, like the handrails and stuff. So um, I decided I wanted to use that. All right, well, let's get started cutting our paper. And not a lot of cuts, but there's some, some punching. Okay, so we're going to start with designer paper number one. I'm just going to look at my sketch really quick to see where it is. Okay, so this is the paper that's going to go in the back. And then the blue is at the bottom. <sighs> decisions, decisions. I think I want to mat my pictures in the wood. So I'm going to cut that. That's going to be my number three paper. And then I'm going to put this lighter on the top and then this darker blue on the bottom, kind of like what's here, although that's just purely coincidental. Um, just because I like to put darker color on the bottom. So it kind of weights the page, draws your eye down the page. So, okay. So what am I cutting first? I'm cutting this light one first. Let me move this out of the way and let's do that first. Okay. So we need two pieces, 11 by five. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the 11 first, which means I have to take off one inch. So when, when you only have to cut off one and three quarters or less, put your paper in from this way. And that is because you have all of this edge or this edge to keep your paper straight. See how it holds it nice and firm so that you know you're getting a nice straight cut. If you're coming from this way and you're trying to go to one inch, your paper can very easily get crooked as you, as you, um, as you slice your paper because it doesn't have this. And um, if you put it up against this top edge, if you're sliding up, it'll actually push, you know, continue to push the paper into that so it won't slip. If you have it pushed up against the top and you're pulling down, you could also pull the paper this way. So if you're cutting down, have it down at the bottom. If you're cutting up, have it up across the top. Hopefully that makes sense. This is my favorite trimmer. I need to treat myself for a new one because I broke my little door. Um, I kind of put it in a bag and it wasn't um, completely safe. And I, I like broke off the little tab and it made me very sad. And although our tools are covered under manufacturing defect, that is a ding dong defect. That is all me. Okay, so where's my cutting? Where's my, oh, I buried it. It's over here. Okay, so I've got it up against the bottom. I'm going to be pulling down. So I've got it at 11. And so I see that this isn't going all the way down. So it looks like I need to stop at two inches. So let me tell you real quick how to do that. There is a little line on the side of this trimmer that shows you where the blade is cutting. And it's one inch in either direction. So if I want to stop at the two, I just go 
put the edge of my trimmer at the one. Now I can actually see where that two line is if I'm going here. And some people don't even realize there is a measure, a ruler right on the side here. So I'm going to go from the top to the two. And I know it's at the two because the front of the little trimmer is at, is at the one because there's one inch from here to here. So if I want to stop at two, I need to stop here at one. Okay, so there is my cut. See, I didn't go all the way through, just to the two. So now, I'm gonna flip this over. And, Eleven. Okay, we need to go to the. We need to go two inches in, and or I need to be to the ten because I gotta do five and a half. And I might be making this a little more complicated, but I want to make sure I have enough of those little tabs. And so, you, I what I want to what I'm. I don't want to cut this line all the way through because then I won't be able to have enough paper to get six of these tabs. So I'm cutting this line and now I'm cutting this line. And to do that, I just added five and five, which is 10. So I'm gonna put the edge of this paper out to 10 so that I have the right amount. And I'm gonna close this, but I'm not gonna start here. I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna go all the way to where the blade hits the one, which is right to the edge of the trimmer right here for the blade. And then I have the piece I need and the piece I need to do all my banners. But now I need to cut this at five so that I get two five by 11. And hopefully that was not too confusing. I know once I start throwing around um, adding numbers together, subtracting numbers, you know, people that, don't like numbers or math, you know, their eyes just glaze over and I lose them. So um, basically you need two pieces, 11 by five. And I have just cut it out of the 12 by 12 paper like this so that I can get enough of the banner punches out of it. All right. So that's it for the big straight cuts. Now I'm going to cut this six by 12 and it doesn't really matter which direction I hold the paper but I always like to check because there is a pattern on this side and so if if for some reason I did want to be able to read the writing I would want to cut it this way so it's always good to look at both sides especially if you might be using the reverse of the paper at all to make sure that you're cutting it the right direction. So my paper was down here. I'm bringing the, um, the blade toward me. All right. So those are both cut 12 by six. I'm going to, why don't I just cut the third paper and then I'll do all the banners at the same time. And this third paper, we need to look at the same thing because this has some wood grain. So, okay. Some of my mats go up and down. Some of them are sideways. So I guess it really doesn't matter which way I put the wood grain because they're going to be going all different directions anyway. So our first cut, these are both four by six, four by four, four by four, four by four, four by six. So I need to cut at four and cut at four again because all of these are four inches. Make sense? See that? All right. So I'm going to cut four at the four twice. So I'm going to go over here to my four inches and cut that. Of course, I didn't push hard enough. Hold, please. Let's do that again. And then back to the four inch. And I have my three four inch pieces. Now, so it doesn't matter which one I start with. The first one is four by six. I'm just gonna cut it at six inches. So I'll swing this back out again and go to the six inch. I don't know why, but my workspace seems extra small. Maybe that's because we had eight foot tables in St. Simon's. That is my only retreat venue where that is a thing. Um, 
and it's a beautiful thing. Although my my share a table, so because um, it's it's really hard on eight feet to hear your 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 friend that you're sitting by or sitting across from. I find, and my ears aren't that old. Oh, see, I had to cut that over again and kind of just pull it off. Um, so yeah, it. And you can't even reach either direction of eight feet. It's like so far. You almost need a rolling chair, which some people brought. But you kind of need a rolling chair so you can go like back and forth and use all of your eight feet. That's what I should do next year. Except I have to bring so much stuff. I don't have room for a rolling chair. Now, see, because you, I'm not live and you guys can't chat with me in the chat. Then Now I'm just talking to myself. I'm feeling a little crazy. Okay. So let's punch here and punch this and then we'll do these punches and then we'll do these and then we're all done. So I just need one of these to punch from and I need both of these and I do need none of these. I need this. Okay. And I will keep my cutting guide handy. And I will keep this handy. So let's do the easy ones first because this is just your standard. So our paper guide flips out from the bottom. We slide our paper in. That closes. We flip the paper guide back under. Then we put our cartridge in our cartridge holder. And it, we've got a notch on the top that lines up with a notch on the front. And we are just going to cut, 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 and cut. So easy. We have this beautiful design and we've got these great, um, we've got these great banner pieces and because I paid attention to the direction my shells and my words are going in the right way I don't know that I'm going to be using that side we'll figure that out when we get to that all right and let's put our next piece in this by far is one of my favorite tools and um it was very sweet not all advisors bring their border maker cartridges to retreats. I am one that does and I struggle with it because I have had to retire some and I know it's because I bring them, you know, for other people to use. But it's kind of like, you know, that saying about ships from were made to sail. Um, oh, like they're not made for port. They're made to be out to sea. It's kind of how I feel about the border maker cartridges and punches in general, um, they're small enough where I can bring them all, which is why I do. But someone thanked me for bringing them um, because it is a treat. A lot of my border maker cartridges that are retired, so I'm taking a big risk by by bringing them and allowing people to using them and, and trusting people. Obviously, I trust my scrappy community um, to not accidentally take them home. Um, so, but it was very sweet that um, someone thinks to me at the uh, last retreat. Okay, so now I'm looking at this and I can just cut this off here. So I'm gonna do that because it's a little awkward to hold this. Um, okay, but I can't do that. Hello. All right, did I mention that I just had a five day retreat? My brain is a little, is a little tired. It's a little is very tired. Not you. Not even just a little tired. Okay. Okay. So I need to punch one, two, three, four, five of these. And to do that, I'm going to hold it upside down. Now I've showed how you can use a post-it note, and you can extend your paper so that you can use. Um, you the regular paper holder and do this the traditional way but um when it's something like this it's just super easy 
uh, especially for a punch like this to do that. And especially when I'm not needing to save this, like this is not even, if you wanted to cut a piece that was even, I'd stick some post-it notes on it and stick it back in this. The post-it notes will extend the paper so that it'll fit in the guide and you are in business. Um, and what I mean by that is this. So if I, when I have to do this, see the magnets are not going to hold this. It just falls. But if you have a post-it note, I have a post-it note right here. I will show it this way now that I showed it the other way. So we extend the size of the paper strip like this. And then we can stick it into the paper holder. And now the post-its are holding it in so that I can cut it because I need to get two rows here of six. So I, it's easiest for me to just use the, the, the guide itself. All right, so now I do have some post-it um, on there, but that comes off easy enough especially because these post-its, although they're adorable, I don't think they're um, like 3M. Oh, they're Bic. And those, they don't stick. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, Bic. You're, I don't think your, your post-its are as good as, three, as 3M. Can I get an amen from the chat? <laughs> All right. So see how that works. So if you've got a tiny little scrap and you're like, no, I need one more border, please, no, then just extend it. And then you can just turn this the other way. And we can do it the other way. And because I used the guide, now those banners, see, look at, look at Bic, you're already lifting up. With these big post-it notes let me down on the live stream I will not be happy don't fail me now come on um look at that just lifting right up just just hang on 30 more seconds it's like it they hold on one time but don't ask them to restick you know here we go. All right. Well, the beauty of that is just fell right off. Lovely. Okay. But now I have this. I don't know what I want to do with this, but I might want to do something with it. And now I can if I want to. <laughs> all right. So almost all of our banners, man, this has a lot of banners are done, but we still need to cut all the banners out of this. Oh, come back here because this is big enough that I can put it in. Now, it's not gonna be big enough to, um, it is not gonna be, uh, you can't get the, the, the middle rows. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to trim it. So it looks like the way it's shown in the picture, well, it doesn't, it's just showing that it's out. I'm just discussing with myself now. I'm just gonna do it this way first. And then I'll trim off and I'll go again. I don't think those big post-its are gonna are gonna last for um, for an encore appearance. So I will just do I will just do this. And I will, now you see how I'm flipping it over? You want to press it a little bit till it grabs the paper, but not all the way through. Turn it over to punch. And you can't, if you ever punch upside down with the border maker cartridges, you want to do that. Especially the intricate ones with lots and lots of punch poop because 
if you keep it upside down as you punch, all of the little punch poop falls back into there and can really gum things up. So to um, keep your border maker cartridges youthful and beautiful, you will want to flip it over uh, when you punch. Okay, we're all done cutting. Yay. Now we can put together. So I'm going to start with this left page and we've got this piece that goes down here and we've got this pretty shimmer piece that goes here and what I didn't notice but what must be true is I don't know if we're just, oh no, I see the green is over the top. Okay, so maybe, mm, maybe they were using the reverse of that. So we're going to have to play with these, but we got tons to play with. So I'm not really worried about it. Okay, so this is going to go, oh, I see. I was thinking it overlapped, but it doesn't. It's, it's going to go, it actually might just go touch edge to edge. If I read the directions, it probably would say, okay, it's just going to touch edge to edge because that is the right amount of space up here. All right. And then let's go ahead and stick these down first. Let me grab my little small pod that has my adhesives of all shapes and sizes. I'm going to grab the mini for those and I'll grab the repositionable. And I see this tape runner is about to run out as it usually does when I am live. So I'll grab the spare. So I've got four tape runners at the ready. I'm sure your work area looks similar when you work. I do love those small pods. When I did my organizational series um, in January, um, I talked a lot about them. They are great. And now they have the cute little rainbow dot version, which are selling like hotcakes. They're it for $12. They're just they're just such a such a great um, organizational tool. Okay, so now we have oh you know what? Gosh darn it. When I was looking ahead at these pictures. Um, okay, I think that's what I was going to do. I'm going to kind of modify a little bit. Sorry, I'm just kind of planning ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll pop that out. Okay, it'll work just fine, but I do need to switch this up. So it's actually going to mirror this page. Um... Well, no, it won't mirror it because this page has two four by fours. But I'm going to do two. Um, it, it's going to be like this. <laughs> All right. So now the question is, do I want the wood grains to match? This has moved over. Okay. And interestingly enough, I mean, these are the colors I have to choose from. And I've got other wood grains on the other side of this wood grain. So I should be able to kind of mix and match um, whatever I want for, for the banner pieces when I get to adding them. Oh, goodness. This is that. Cut, I made a mistake. Okay. All right, 
so I'm going to do both of these pages first, and then I will come back and add all those banner pieces, lickety split. Um, one of the things that we did this weekend, because I, um, I do my St. Simon's retreat with another Creative Memories Advisor, and we did a paper buffet, which I know are all the rage and people do them are doing them all over the country. They kind of make me anxious. And so I have not done them. Um, everybody seemed to have a really fun time. And as I was um, looking through my paper stash, um, I had done cards or something over the summer with this Florida card kit. And I have tons of this. It's like alligator alligator skin paper, but it's um, kind of blue. And then the back side has those shells. And, and so when I saw that, I thought, hmm, maybe I do need to do a paper buffet. Because I have a lot of paper from my monthly card kits that, um, that I end up with like five or six sheets of something. And I don't know what I'm going to do with them. So I'm thinking maybe, maybe I will do I will do one we'll see I'm not promising all of you paper fiends out there but it might be something to consider <laughs> uh, I don't know why it stresses me out it's because we're all such such lovely friends and you know, I'd, I'd hate for a, a fight to break out over a piece of paper, but we wouldn't do that. All right. Okay. So even just like that, I love it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie about that. Okay. So now I need to go back in and pay, piece these back together. And like I said, I have this fun, I have lighter color, um, lighter color wood and so I'm kind of digging I'm kind of digging that but I, let me just go ahead and add the adhesive instead of me placing them and having to pick them up I think this is a job for the mini tape runner because I could actually use the regular tape runner on this because it's that thick but um, I think the mini is perfect so if you don't have a mini might need a mini. Okay, I put that in crooked. <laughs> Work with me. All right, now I don't know what color this would be. I guess the wood again. This have to slide on under here. Okay, and coming right along. Now I need to add the top. And it looks like these are are placed opposite. You now what would be a good idea is if I take one of these and place it on here like this for spacing. That's fun. I guess my brain isn't completely and utterly exhausted all the way. I maybe should have thrown in some of the dark wood. Maybe I'll throw in a dark one down here. Or maybe it'll look like an accident, but we'll know that it's not, that I did it on purpose. Okay, and now I'll add these back in. So if you did, if you're making it and you did what I did, then you have this little template. And that's a good, you know, thing to have if you use this technique and you're using the banners um, on your pages that, you know, obviously to cut the banners, you're going to get a little template and then you can use it on your paper so that it's even. All right, and then let's see what other what else do we do down here? We added a little little banners cut 
coming off this um, this picture down here. And whoops, let's not have it be crooked. Oh, work with me. I'm tired. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. There we go. All right. So this side, we'll put some. Oh, silliness. This really does need to move. Oh, wait, you know what? I'm going to swap them. That's perfect. You know what? It's better anyway because those other pictures are when we first got on. Okay, so we're going to do this, this, and this. And we just had a wild theme this weekend. So my end of January, which used to be my cruise every year until COVID, um, my scrapbook cruise, we always would dress wild. And... So we care when we started going to St. Simon's, we carried that theme because um, it's usually at the end of January. And so we were all in our animal prints this weekend. And some people don't have animal prints, but that was the fun thing about doing it every year on the cruise. Like people would get like one, one outfit a year. <laughs> Like they just added to their to their animal print wardrobe. Now this might have looked better with a lighter background. Maybe the lighter wood. But um, that ship has sailed. No pun intended since I'm doing a cruise. We are not going to go back and do that. Make changes. To paper. We're just going to go with it because you know what? Done is better than perfect. Now, some of you might not subscribe to that. I've seen some of your pages and they are perfect. All right. And this is a, it's supposed to be three and a half by three and a half. Um... All right, one side done, and let's just finish off the next, and then actually, oh, you know what? Okay, so I grabbed this new compass punch, and um, I'm going to pick this up and punch a couple. Out of this paper since it will be covered right and since I've pretty much used all the paper I want to let's make sure that the punch poop doesn't fall back into itself I'm gonna I guess I'll do three want a odd number All right, so I just have to be careful on those edges that I don't cut this picture down too much. Because I don't want to expose myself, which I don't think I'm in danger of that. I'm going to cut a little bit more off this side so that we don't lose all the beautiful ocean. Get all this out of here. And there. Perfect. There was lots of talk about the cruise this weekend. You know what? I'm going to use... Where'd my mini go? I'm just going to put the mini on here. 
then I can do this. Come on over here. This is a pretty quick, um, wait, now I've lost track of what's what here. I can skip that teal one and then this one's a wood again. And it's got the little shimmer piece. And this is shipping up <laughs> or shaping up to be a great page. Now I went kind of close to the top. I regret it just a little bit. But what I did was I just touched, I touched that. And so I'm going to just go with that again, just for, to keep things the same. And I'm just going in those little holes with the tape and then I can go back. I'm going to go with the, no, I'm going to, Hmm. All right, I'm going to do the dark one over here. I just want to balance out the dark. I didn't want it to go too far over. Okay. Actually, I didn't use any of this. You know? I, I might need to add some on the other side. I'll just do, I'll just do one. Let's use the template again. just to add the last two pictures I've mentioned before I love taking pictures of you guys taking pictures it's one of my favorite things to do I just love the joy and two of these three ladies were at St. Simon's and it was so fun to see them. One flew from Ohio for the retreat and the other one drove from Maryland and it was such a treat to have them there and we don't get to see them nearly enough. And where is my last picture? Oh, here it is. And this one will go right on. Now I'm gonna like kind of take off my arm just so that we can get a little bit of the ocean, possibly, maybe. I might take a little bit more off my arm. My arm's not that important. And we can take some off the bottom here. I know Gail won't mind. Okie dokie. Now I just need to add some of these compass. These again, these are this is a new punch. And I thought that would be perfect. Now for this punch, because of all the holes, I do need the repositionable tape. That is definitely the way to go. Then I can add my title. I can add a journal box. I could have also punched 
that out of some white paper down for down here. And where's the last one? Let's see, where do I want that to go? I think this little, this little hole down here. Oh, well, I got lots of banners left over. I'm not sure what all these banners are for. I do need two more for over here, right? Um, yes. Well, it looks like I need a wood one. So let me add another piece. Let me add another. Well, I can't add it there. I guess I can add it here. I love this little design you get like in the in the reverse, you know, this little, you know, that <laughs> where they come together, a little hexagon almost. I, I like that look. All right. I want to do the lighter wood. So now I'm switching this one too. This is ridiculous, Tara. What are you doing? You just said done is better than perfect. All right. Reapply that. Come on. We're almost done now. I mean, not done. I still need a journal and add a title and all that good thing. But I won't, I won't, I won't make you sit here for all that. All right. But sometimes these little banner type things are just what you need um, to add a little something. But look at all these little little doodads I have. So we used all the paper. So now you have you have more of these little guys. And I suppose you could add them underneath other, although there's a lot of a lot of them going on. All right. So that is our page. I think it came out great. What do you think? Hopefully you try this project recipe and hopefully you jumped off and you RSVP'd so that you got the link to the PDF. Um, and if not, make sure you do that next month so that you don't miss out on next month's project recipe. All righty. Well, that is all for me tonight. Again, I'm so sorry that I am not here with you live. But I will answer any questions that you ask in the comments. So even though this isn't live, feel free to ask any questions about something I did or feel free to comment. Um, the comments and the likes and the shares will get you entered into the Fun Friday giveaway this Friday, February 9th. Don't forget to let me know if you would like a secret box. And if you have any questions about upcoming retreats or how to register, just reach out and let me know. And I guess that's it until I see you again. Stay scrappy, my friends. Have fun. Bye.